In this tutorial, we're going to add Google Analytics and Google Search Console to the blogging website that we've been creating. There's a whole playlist for what we're doing on this site linked to in the description down below. So check that out if you want to. I highly encourage you to. And this is just the next step, adding Google Analytics so we can see what our visitors and traffic is doing on our site. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you have not done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started installing Google Analytics. To get started with Google Analytics, you have to go to marketingplatform.google.com forward slash about forward slash Google Analytics. It's linked to down below. Click on that link, you should come to a page that looks like this. This is where we can sign up for Google Analytics. It is free, it gives you a whole lot of data, and it's super easy. Just click on Start for free up in the top right corner. You'll be either taken to a login page or a page that looks like this. If it's a login page, it's gonna be a Google login. So you have to have a Gmail account. Just sign in with your Gmail account. You'll come to here, you click on Start Measuring. If you already signed into your Google account, just click on Start Measuring and then we'll be taking it right into Google Analytics. And here we add a name for the account. This name is the overarching name of the account. So it's something like my analytics is an acceptable name. Only you will see this. So don't worry about what it is exactly. Just type something in really at the end of the day. I usually keep all these checked. It basically allows promotion for Google products and services. If you want that, keep it checked. If you don't uncheck it, benchmarking allows you to see data of your site compared to other sites in your industry without sharing any personal data or exact site types or site names and stuff. So it's very general data, but benchmarking is always nice. Tech support, marketing specialists, just read through these if you want them. Check the box if you don't, don't. Click on next. Here we add a property name. I'm gonna make the property name the name of my website. Just the domain name of it is what I usually do. WPPHD.com, you can capitalize those if you want. I don't really pick a time zone. Pick a currency. Right now the advanced settings has some legacy stuff. It might be different when you're watching this video and walking through this. We're not gonna use the advanced settings. Let's click on next. Pick an industry category. Education is not one of them. It is, jobs and education. I'll just choose that one. Business size, one to 10 employees. How do you intend to use Google Analytics with your business? Check all that apply. Measure that, optimize this, measure that, optimize this. I like all these words. Increase this, measure that, analyze that. Measure that, measure this, and other, sure. Um, more measuring, that's not very helpful. I'll unselect other. Okay, click on create, check some boxes. Read through these if you have time, I don't have time for that. I'm just gonna assume that they're gonna take full advantage of me if something goes wrong. Click on accept, and now we have our brand spec and new analytics account. If you want email communications, check these boxes. If you don't, just click on save and don't check those boxes. Now we're gonna add our website to our property. So we created our account called My Analytics. We created our property called wp-php.com, which is right here. This is all the property data. And inside that property, we're now going to add some other stuff. I've got, they have a name for it. We'll see it in a minute. I forgot what it is. We're gonna add a website and we're gonna add again our URL. HTTPS is what we're gonna choose here. Stream name, let's make this a real title. There we go. Enhanced measurement, automatically measure interactions and content on your sites in addition to standard page view measurements. That sounds great. Let's keep that on. Create stream. Now we have up here a measurement ID. This is similar to the old school tracking IDs. This is your first time installing Google Analytics. You won't know what these are anyway, so don't worry about it. I'm gonna click on the X to close this. And then we need to add some code to our website. The easiest way to do this is with the Google Site Kit plugin for WordPress. So with our freshly created analytics account, we can now install Site Kit on our site and just log in to the analytics account and it'll add the code where it needs to add the code. If you want to do it manually, your options are down here. You can use the global site tag, just copy this into the head section of your site. I'll make another video where I show how to do this specifically. Or you can use Google Tag Manager. It has a bit of a learning curve, but it's really powerful. We're not gonna do that right now. We'll do this one later. We're gonna do Google Site Kit, the plugin. So let's go into our WordPress site again and go to plugins, add new, search for Site Kit. Let's search for Google Site Kit, because clearly that's not what we want. Google Site Kit. Still not there. With a space. There it is, finally. The search is not the best. 
So here's Google Site Kit. Click on Install Now to install it, and then click on Activate. Checking compatibility. That's fantastic. Okay, good. We're compatible. Click on Start Setup. And now we simply sign in with Google, and this is going to create a Google Webmaster account as well. So click on the Google account that we just used to create our analytics account. And then we will choose allow and allow again. And then click on allow again. And then click on proceed here. And ownership is verified. It said we had to add an HTML token to our website, but then I guess we didn't need to because we're signed to a Google account. And a Google account has this account as the analytics. I'm not sure, but we didn't need to add the HTML code at that time. Click on allow to allow access to the to the account data, and then click on add site to set up the search console. Simple as that, we're done. Go to my dashboard, and I do not connect AdSense to this. We do have to connect Analytics. Let's do that. Connect service, and you think it would have done that because we are connecting Analytics, but anyway, it didn't. Click on allow again, and then click on allow again, and then hopefully the property you created is auto-filled. In our case, it is. The view, we just choose all website data. And then we click on Configure Analytics. We're connected for Google Search Console. We're connected for Google Analytics. And we'll start seeing data in here in a few days. And the data will also start appearing in our account over here. If we go to, let's see, Home, this is where our data will start appearing and populating once we start getting traffic. And next up is watching this video up here, which is the next video in this series. And down here in this playlist, you will see the full series where we build a blog from scratch and add in all the important things you need to have an online business these days. Google Analytics, which was this video, SSL certificates, landing pages, opt-in pages, email lists, and all that stuff that you need to have an online business, we're covering in this playlist. So make sure you check that out. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I'll see you in the next video.